Welcome back. Last time we finished the design of our game over menu, but it doesn't do anything yet. In this video we'll make it display the result of the game, make it respond to user input and of course put it on the screen. We start by adding a new enum to the UI project called option. As the name suggests, it will contain the menu options our players can choose from. They can restart the game, exit the application, and we'll also need a continue option later. Okay, now let's go back to the code behind for game over menu. We start by adding a custom event called Option Selected. The idea is that the main window registers an event handler for this event. And when a player clicks on either button, we'll invoke the event handler passing in the selected option. If the Restart button is clicked, We'll fire the event passing in option.restart. The question mark here ensures that the event is only raised if there is an event handler registered. We'll do the same thing when the exit button is clicked, except this time we pass in option.exit. At this point, our game over menu will respond to user input, but it also has to display the winner and the reason why the game ended. So next, we add a method called getWinnerText. It takes the winning player as parameter, and if it's white, we return white wins. If it's black, then black wins. And if it's player.none, Then it's a draw. Note that this code generates a warning. That's because the method could technically be called with a value like this. We won't ever do that, but it's complaining that our switch expression does not cover all possible values. To fix it, just change the last case to an underscore, which means any other value. We'll write a similar method for the recent text in a minute, but first we need one called player string. It takes a player and returns their name as a string. If the player is white, we return white. If it's black, we return black. In any other case, we return an empty string. 
the last case will never be hit, but we'll get a warning without it. Now we can write get reason text. It takes two parameters, the end reason and the player who should have moved if the game wasn't over. In the body, we switch on the end reason If it's a stalemate, we return stalemate. Followed by the name of the current player. And then can't move. So if there was a stalemate and white couldn't move, it would say stalemate, white can't move. For checkmate, we do exactly the same, except replace stalemate with checkmate, of course. We haven't implemented the 50 move rule, insufficient material, and threefold repetition in the game state yet. But I'll include them here for later. And finally, we need a dummy case to avoid warnings. The last thing we have to do in this class is modify the constructor. It should take the final game state as parameter. And after initialize component, We'll grab the result of the game make winner text display the winning player and make recent text display why the game ended That's it for this class. Now we just have to display the menu from the main window. So let's open mainwindow.saml. Here we add an empty content control called menu container. As the name suggests, it will contain the active menu if there is one. Now let's navigate to the code behind. Here, I'll start by adding a method called isMenuOnScreen. There's a menu on screen if the menu container is non-empty. We can use this method 
in board grid mouse down. If a player clicks on the board while there is a menu on the screen, then nothing should happen, so we return immediately. Alright, now let's write a show game over method. It creates a game over menu, passing the final game state to its constructor. Next, we add the menu to the menu container. This will make it show up on screen. Finally, we need to respond when a player presses one of the buttons. So let's add an event handler for the option selected event. I'll use a lambda expression for it. If the players choose to start another game, We'll hide the menu by emptying the container. And invoke a method called restartGame. We will write that method in a second. Otherwise, if the exit button was pressed, we shut down the entire application. Restarting the game is easy. First, we make sure all highlights are hidden. And clear the move cache. Then we create a new game state with the initial board setup Draw the board, and make sure the cursor has the correct color. All that's left to do now is to call show game over when a game ends. We'll do that from handle move. After a move has been made, we check if it ended the game. And if so, call show game over. Now, when a checkmate or stalemate occurs, the game ends and the game over menu displays what happened. Note that the menu scales with the entire application. If I click Exit, then the game shuts down. And if I click Restart, then a new game is started. That's it for this video. In the next few parts, we'll add special moves to the game. First up is Pawn Promotion. See you next time.